Hello guys and a very welcome to this little update on my Volkswagen Golf City Strummer. As you can see, I have just installed the battery modules into this car and it's time to try to fit everything here. I have eight battery modules here from a Volkswagen ID3 and each and every module here are built up in a 12S configuration and fully charged. Each and every module will hold up to 50 volts. So when those battery modules are hooked up in series, the whole battery pack here will hold a little over 400 volts, so pretty high voltage there. And uh, I have just taken the connectors to those modules and uh, spliced them in to the Nissan Leaf harness here. So this end is Nissan Leaf and will go into the BMS here, like so. And the other one. This one. So now all the 96 cells are connected to this BMS here. And this BMS is for a 40 kilowatt hours Nissan Leaf battery pack. So this battery pack will be on 55 kilowatt hours and I don't know what will happen there. If I will have some fault code or anything. I'm not sure about that. I have to try that first. And I have tried this system in a bench and it is working just fine. I have not put it on load yet but the motor is turning and the charger is charging. And uh, I think that I will have this controller around here. It will fit pretty nice, like so. And those harnesses will go through everything here. They will not be laying on top of this, of course. And then we have the resolver. This is the brain of everything. So this will talk with the inverter and the charger and then the BMS, of course. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have this here or... I maybe have this ECU here or something. Yeah, well, I have not decided that yet, so uh, I will take a look at that later. And then we have this relay box or high voltage relay box. It's uh, not uh, normal relays here. Those relays are magnetic arc blowout relays, if I remember it right. And what that means is that uh, this relay is completely closed up and filled with some kind of gas that uh, won't burn, of course. And uh, then there are magnets inside of this relay. So when the relay open and if there is current going through the relay, there will of course be an arc. But uh, those magnets inside of this relay are blowing out that arc. And also together with this gas inside of the relay, we don't have much arc at all actually. So magnetic arc blowout relays. So it's pretty interesting. Not normal relays. You cannot use a normal relay together with high voltage DC because uh, when you open that circuit under load, well, you will have a pretty bad arc and maybe the current just are still going to flow there. I have heard some uh, stories about people that have uh, installed their solar panels directly to a water heater and uh, well when the relay opens up the circuit there the current just continues to flow so not recommended at all to have normal relays together with DC there. However here is the high voltage relay box and uh, we also have the pre-charge relay here. And how this works is like this, that when you turn on the ignition, one high voltage relay will be active and the pre-charge relay will also be active at the same time. And around three tenths of a second later, the other high voltage relay will be active. That's pretty much it. And then when those two high voltage relays are activated, then the pre-charge relay will open up. 
And this relay box, I think that I will have that one installed here. It's a little tight, but I think it will fit. I think that I have to install that first, of course, and then uh, install the modules because I need some space to screw everything into the box here so it don't uh, rattle around when I am driving. You don't want that inside of a high voltage battery, of course. And the other cable that I have here is from the charging port. So this one will just go through the car and uh, to the front there to the charger. And then later on I will also connect the DC cables to it. Right now I am going to use the old Shadow uh, fast charging because there are not a good um, adapter out there yet. They are trying out some stuff with this uh, CSS uh, short, fast charging, but that's not ready yet uh, and it can take uh, up to one or maybe two years, who knows, if ever it's going to work, I'm not sure. So I have to keep my eyes on that, but uh, when that's uh, out there, I also can DC charge it from this port that I have here. But for now, if I need to, I can DC charge it in the engine bay, for now at least. So that's it about that. And then we have the boxes itself, of course. I have uh, 50 millimeters of styrofoam in the bottom of the, those boxes. So we have uh, some good insulation to the battery modules. And just so you know, the heat is not the problem here. It's actually the cold. At least for me, I am living in Sweden and I am planning to just charge my car at home and maybe fast charge it one or maybe maximum two times per one trip there. You have to keep in mind here that uh, I have 55 kilowatt hours with me, so I don't need to stop and do some fast charging all the time. So maybe I have to do that once in a long trip there. And by the way, I'm not going to use this car for daily driving. It's just uh, going to buy some ice cream and, uh, you know, have a great time. Maybe take one or two long trips just to see how it works, of course, but uh, it's not for everyday use. Let's leave it like that. So, 50 millimeters of styrofoam underneath the batteries for insulation. And then I have a four millimeter plywood on top of that. And that's not only good to keep the cold out, it's also good if I hit something on the road there. So let's say that I am driving over a stone or something. I will at least have 50 millimeter of space between the battery modules and the bottom of this battery box here. And as you also can see, I have some 10 millimeters of uh, thread rods that are holding the battery modules in this section here. And those thread rods are also going through the floor and will be bolted in the bottom of the car there. So it will not go anywhere. And that's important, of course. So what about the range then? Well, I'm not sure, but I at least hope for 300 to maybe in the best case 400 kilometers on one charge. At least 300 kilometers, that I'm pretty sure of. So, so if I need to go somewhere on a day trip or something, I mean, if I have to go 500 kilometers, that's completely doable. Just one stop there to DC charge and uh, the heat is not a problem. Not in one charging session there, maybe after two or three, I will have some um, problems with the batteries getting hot there. It's now good to have those battery modules in place, so now I have the weight here and uh, I can start to see how I have to adjust the chassis for the car. That's also a big <laughs> challenge here. I don't know if you did see when I uh, just lifted out the old lead acid batteries there. <laughs> it was so high after that, so I cannot go around like that forever. So. I have now bought uh, some coils over to the car and installed them today actually to the car and I am pretty satisfied now with the height of the car. I don't want it too low. I just want it to be a little lower than the original just so it looks nice. But of course I need to install the windows and the motor and uh, the rest of the stuff before I start to adjust everything but still 
I start to see how this will end up anyway. So now I just have to do some more work on the car here and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this later on. And then I just have to say thank you so much for watching this video guys and I really hope that I see you next time. Take care and goodbye.